Welcome to Ada Lands, a futuristic low-poly art metaverse on the Cardano blockchain. Oh, and in case it's not clear, this is me walking around in a demo version of this metaverse. Ada Land is actually one of the few metaverses that has delivered a very rough demo of what the world could look and feel like. However, this is still a very, very early stage metaverse, and there's a lot that still needs to be built out. So if you're watching this in July of 2022, you're really early to this project. Adaland is a true play to earn fully decentralized metaverse with the ultimate mission to establish an ecosystem that onboards millions of users on the Cardano blockchain. At Adaland, the team's goal is to introduce the next 100 million users to the world of Web3 by enabling the next 10,000 developers to build real world utility applications on their metaverse platform. So quite the big goals that this team has actually. Ada Land sets a new standard for a futuristic landscape with sci-fi inspired characters, environments, activities, and a ton more. With Ada Land, the team aims to establish a metaverse for everyone on the blockchain and provides infinite possibilities to creatively express themselves. You'll be able to customize your own avatar, buy and build estates, join quests and missions, buy and sell assets, earn money and explore the vast landscape Ada Land has to offer. This project has a big emphasis on community and engagement. You can see it here in their vision of their ecosystem. They've got four main pillars that they plan to build their metaverse on. First is the team. The Adaland team is knowledgeable about community building and building strong corporate partnerships. In addition, they're deeply plugged into the blockchain developer community. Speaking of the team though, this is a partially docs team. You can find a few here that have public LinkedIn's available and have their names and details listed out. But some of them are still not public, like their CEO and co-founder as an example. Hopefully, as the team is more comfortable with their product, they will and could dox themselves in the future. There's actually a disclaimer here that they mention that it's really the team's own choice to do so, and it is not a requirement to be part of the project. This is a relatively small team currently, but they do have good experience across the board, and I do believe they also work with third-party companies to bring the metaverse to life. Now, the second pillar is the developer community. The team's goal is to onboard the next 10,000 developers onto the Cardano blockchain by providing them with incentives to develop real-world utility projects. The team will accomplish this by allocating part of the treasury to incentivize the developer community, partnering with company partners in order to forge partnerships that benefit developers, and then finally follow a unique social media strategy providing value to developers. So my guess here is they would be either promoting them on their social media channels, providing them with some sort of monetary or token reward to actually build on the uh, Adaland metaverse. Then the third pillar is company partners, which benefit from branding and being able to bring different decentralized applications into the Adaland metaverse. Last but certainly not least is the Adaland community. The heart of Adaland is the community. The team will onboard the next 100 million users into the world of Web3. The Adaland team has decades of experience building community-driven business models, and their goal is to provide the best Web3 experience for every community member through metaverse experiences, experiences outside the metaverse, entertainment, education, and then naturally monetary rewards through tokens. Because part of this metaverse is still a play to earn aspect to it. And that's what will actually attract a lot of people to it initially. This metaverse will have a dual token ecosystem. The main governance token will be alpha, which will have features such as dividends. The team does make reference to REITs, which are real estate investment trusts in the real world that pay out their shareholders dividends based on profits. So it does seem like there's some sort of dividend system that they're going to be building into the token. Alpha will also have limited supply of tokens, which adds elements of scarcity to allow the price to increase over time. With the caveat, obviously, is that demand needs to be consistent in order for that to really happen. The second token will be the in-game token called ALA or ALA. And this is going to be a stable token. And that's in order for it to be reliable as a token for users to use in the game itself. This will basically be the token you'd use in the metaverse to play games and build infrastructure within the metaverse. So looking briefly at the distribution of alpha, I do see that this is a relatively aggressive distribution. If I combine the team, private sales and seed investors, that's actually over 50% of the total liquidity in the hands of the team and investors. And 
If you look at my channel, I've done a lot of reviews on different projects and tokenomics, and generally teams have hovered around 35 to 40 percent or so compared to the almost 52 percent that Alpha is being distributed to. So personally, I'm not a big fan of the tokenomics here, but I will say that if these investors do decide to hold and not sell, I do think it could limit the price action in the long term and potentially benefit the price of the tokens. But coming back to the gameplay itself, I'm sure you've noticed the graphics and the art within the world. This is what is called low poly art, a form of design that consists of a number of polygons, shapes, meshed into an object. Low poly is a trending art genre that is widely popular in the metaverse and game space in the recent years. It allows creators to design a game effectively and gives it a unique shape while maintaining an effective time consumption that is being used in each object. So the reason why the team went this route is, you know, one of the main reasons I believe in, in the white paper they mentioned is that is the low amount of poly shapes allows for not just an aesthetic future that is trendy and has indie game style that they're looking for, but low poly art is a great optimization technique. The low amount of shapes allows the game to run more smoothly and consumes less energy while being more efficient. This enables the developers to provide a game that runs smoothly even in areas with a lot of traffic and objects to load. Low polyard is growing as a design trend and for the Adaline team it is vital that the project is up to date when it comes to the technology revolving around Adaline and the aesthetic aspect of it. This applies to the metaverse itself and the project as a whole. Every object in Adaland has been designed aesthetically to please the condition that it should be one futuristic, two fit the Adaland theme, and three unique to Adaland. And personally, I think that's what's interesting about this project: the artistic nature and authenticity behind how they are building up this world. In the white paper, they do mention that the design ratio of Adaland has been estimated by their artists to be 70% built from scratch from primary and secondary designers, 20% redesigned with full license and ownership for official studios, 10% of their designs were delivered by external artists with Adaland having full ownership. Which is, if you think about it, so much more than what your typical metaverse or gaming project would do. And that's basically just copying a bunch of pre-compiled objects and creating characters that are really not unique at all. So I think that's really what's special about this project and then why I think it's so cool and interesting to, to kind of look at. From a roadmap perspective, this is a relatively long-term project, I believe. It's not until stage four is when you would really see the game initially get released. But there's a few milestones that are important to note here. They do plan on having multiple land sales. Phase one and phase two have been completed, but keep an eye out as there are more land sales to be made. I believe mint price was about 70 ADA tokens before, which is around 40 to $50 at the current prices of Cardano, which is not bad at all for land prices. They do plan on having a marketplace as well in the future to facilitate a lot of transactions. Another milestone is staking. They plan on allowing you to stake tokens for passive income opportunities. But I think honestly, overall, this is a long-term roadmap to be a part of. This is a very early stage project though, so make sure to do your own research and understand the risks with investing in something like this. I do recommend you checking out their website, white paper, and Discord for a real deep dive into everything there is to know about Adaland. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel.